get my socks on. <laughs> There's probably going to be a little bit of delay. What do you got? Um, yeah, it, it, there you go. You're live. Webcam only. Hello, community. I am Stephen Donnelly, art director for Kingdom Games, and I am in my home studio today because we're going to be drawing. Uh, with me, as always, is our distinguished, honorable community manager. Chris Bashir. That would be me. I am here. I'm here to learn about art. Teach me. I'm going to turn up the volume so they can hear you. Sounds like a good idea. So community bushes, or, ah, sorry, Chris, <laughs> just trying to say Bashir there, has uh, hooked me up with this great software, OBS. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not. But um, right now I'm going to switch it over and you should be looking at just some craziness and now you should be seeing uh, my Photoshop desktop and that's what I want to show you today so one of the things that um, actually I'll just start with the basics I'm going to be working in Photoshop Go back to and for those of you that are familiar with Photoshop, uh, you know that now they're going to a monthly subscription. I think it's about $20 a month and they keep you updated with all the latest things going on. Uh, something I've done in the previous shows is shown you how to make brushes. Uh, this particular time, I'm actually going to go searching for brushes and Let's see if this works. Ah, it does. So I did a search for Photoshop brushes and I came across this, uh, the 60 best Photoshop brushes. And I took a look at what they had here. And just to try out a few, I picked uh, the dry brushes because as you know, I enjoy painting with like a dry brush or a dry pencil. I also picked out uh, this Photoshop brush set, which looks a little bit like the basic Photoshop brush set, but it's got a lot of stuff in here. Now, I should call out the artist who created these two. So the dry brushes come from an artist named Kirk Wallace. The Photoshop brush set that I'm going to take a look at is from Matt Heath. And the ones that I'm really interested in trying out is this dry brush set from Chris Spooner. Now with each of these they offer them for you for free but you do have to like fill out uh, kind of a online join the group so you will get some email so make sure you always use your like business account email when you do these kinds of things. So before I get started, uh, I want to and you'll have to forgive my camera it's got like autofocus issues which is a little annoying. You always look good, Steven, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, even when it's going in and out of focus, I'm gonna try and compensate for it. Uh, I'm also wearing my Frazetta t-shirt here. That's right, hopefully you all remember who Frank Frazetta is. And uh, I gotta send a shout out to Robert Rodriguez for uh, hosting a Frazetta museum every year at South by Southwest. So if you're a Frazetta junkie like myself, hit Austin in March and spend some time in the Frazetta Museum. It's a really cool place. Uh, I also want to send a shout out to Amber Rain. Thank you for uh, posting and playing the game and sharing your videos and feedback. Uh, Community 5 Guardians of David has been out since last Tuesday the 24th of November to a resounding success. Uh, if you played it and you've spent more than an hour in it, you know how good it gets. It's about a 20 hour game and uh, let your friends know the game is awesome. I know on the Steam page uh, some of the reviews are mixed but if you take a quick look at the time invested anyone who doesn't play at least two or three hours is eh, indifferent. Anyone who plays over two three hours absolutely gets it. We they have a brilliant play game. For 18, 20 hours when they are playing more than two hours. They're playing the whole game. Right. <laughs> So 18 to 20 hours. It's a fantastic experience. It's very interesting. 
and I found it really unexpected and at a thoughtful level. So I enjoy a good story. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to switch this back. Um, so I've just downloaded these brushes. Oh my gosh. I'm in a rut on the floor. Um, I have put those brushes into, and where they go is your computer, local drive, users, Steven, app data, roaming, Adobe, Photoshop, presets, brushes. There's a few hoops to go through to find this, but it's, it's actually a hidden folder, so it takes a little bit. But that's where you want to put the brushes. And then in Photoshop here, it's just a matter of opening up your brush presets. And then we are going to click on Load Brushes. And then I have to go and remember the names of the brushes I added. And the first one is going to be Spoon Graphics Dry Brush Set. So we'll come down here and we'll look at Spoon Graphics Dry Brush Set. I'm going to go ahead and load that. And when you load that, these brushes actually show up in the bottom of your stack. So I'm very interested to see what those look like. Oh, and they're crazy big brushes too. All right, the next set I picked up, I'm not sure if it's those, Raster Dry Brushes by Kirk Wallace. And he calls those TRZ own dry brushes. So let's go to load brushes and let's go find TRZ. Okay, there they are. Load. Now, when I go in here and I go to load brushes, uh, you'll see that Photoshop comes with a ton of brushes already for you to mess with. Uh, so if you really want to get into painting and drawing, spend some time playing with those brushes and finding things that you like. Okay. So I'm going to close that preset. All these guys are now in here. There we go. And as you know, I am using a... Give you a look at my setup here with the camera. Hopefully I can pull this over a little bit. But I am using a 24 inch Cintiq. Uh, it's not the touch Cintiq, it's just, why is that blurry? Come on. Technology. Yeah. Yeah, what is going on with the technology? You're breaking it, Steven. You're breaking I am breaking it. Chris, do we have any participants in our community? Uh, we have uh, Scottman1978. He's also known as Andrew. And I believe we're doing a podcast with him tomorrow. So okay. it should be very interesting. So hello to you. And of course, we have Chelsea. He's always watching. I'm surprised uh, I'm surprised some of your peeps aren't here. I'm surprised I haven't seen Amber pop up yet. So hopefully... What's going on? I don't know. I guess I just should get the memo. <laughs> but I'm sure they're, they're filtering in. People are arriving just in time because they know art is coming <laughs> oh my gosh this is ridiculous so I got one of those uh, plastic floor liners uh, when you have carpet so you can roll easier on your chair the problem is it, it actually creates divots in the plastic and then you get stuck <laughs> yes okay um, oh hey what are we gonna draw <laughs> you tell me that's what I want to know all right, all right. I just promised there would be art what are we drawing? I don't what know. Are you but I just I don't know what I just opened there, but it kind of freaked me out. <laughs> okay, control alt uh, control alt Z is multiple undos. And actually before we get started, uh, let's talk a little bit about five and let's go do some searching. We're going to Egypt and specifically the Sinai. So let's see what we can find with Egypt, Sinai, and images. And what we are doing is looking at um, creating new environments that we're going to have in five. And wow, actually that looks really cool. So I'm just going to open that up in a new link. Um, 
And I, I don't know how anyone else feels, but I actually love just searching for things I'm not familiar with. Um, now with technology, we've got these uh, Google Earth shots of just about everywhere on Earth, and it's just really cool to see all that stuff. Okay, here's okay, another interesting one. Right uh, we're actually, so for the future, for things to come, and as you know, concept is always out on the forefront of production. Um, we are going to be, uh, well, eventually we are going to be expanding the regions that five takes place in. And we're going to be expanding to the southwest, deeper into the Sinai Peninsula and into Egypt. We're also going to be expanding to the east and uh, the lands of Assyria and Babylonia. So exciting. I, it's very exciting. I'm like stoked. So the first thing I want to do is start, well, let's start building some concepts of what these places may look like. Monastery of St. Catherine. Oh, hey, there's a nice shot. Oh, you know what I'm not doing? I need to set the uh, size. So under search tools, if you set the size to larger than 800 by 600, you have an easier time with uh, better photographs, larger usable reference showing up. Um, a Lou with a view. That's actually kind of funny, but I like those rocks. And I know that's somewhere in Egypt, but that looks pretty cool. And I like those. Wow, that's a big one. Wallpaper. So whenever I get started, it's research. And once I get a few images that I like, I'm just going to save them to reference. So we've got this image here. We've got that one. I like those rocks. Uh, I'm not sure how you would describe these rocks, but they're kind of big, bumpy, roundish mountains. They look like they've been worn down over millennia by wind and rain. And then I want to say this is like the Temple of Karnak or Luxor. That's what it is. Uh, and this is really relevant because we certainly want to put places that are mysterious and temple-like structures in this area. And then that's just a view of the mountains. And I'm kind of liking that shape. So I'm getting my screens a little filled up. So I'm actually just going to leave that there and then I'll look at it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is just an empty layer. Now, historically, um, when I'm working, I start with a very, that's not it. Oh, this is lovely. So I'm missing some of my core brushes. Oh no. <laughs> I know, I'm like, ah, where are these guys? Okay, so let's do brush presets, see if we can find them under there. Let's go back to the top. Okay, there we go. So this is actually one of the oldest default Photoshop brushes. And I love it because it reminds me of working with charcoal. And you can just get a really natural broken edge with that. So that's kind of cool. Now, it's been a few weeks since I've done anything. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is actually just coming in here and warming up. And... Uh, so let's go and take a look at these new brushes that we downloaded. And I want to try out these pencil brushes here on the end. Now, these things are huge. And for those of you that are new to Photoshop, and even those that have been using it for a while, the larger your brush is, the more memory intensive it can be. And so you might 
at some point you need to save out these brushes like this one looks like it's about 400 pixels square and I have found anything larger than 128 square starts to get a little intense but um, oh this thing is gorgeous I'm wait I'm on delay I'm trying to I'm trying to see I wonder what you're what how, how, what, what are you creating I, I'm just warming up okay I love that brush Oh, that's incredible too. So, Stephen, can you tell me why? Why do we concept? What is the what is the purpose of concept? What do you do with concepts? <laughs> concept saves money. <laughs> okay. Why I, does it save money? That's the bottom line. So, when you're creating a entertainment product like a game, and uh, in our particular case, hey, we're we want to do some things in Egypt. Well, we could actually put the production team right to work saying make Egypt rocks and give us an Egyptian temple and every single artist will do whatever they think is cool and it takes a lot more time to build in 3D and then you've got to sculpt in 3D and then you've got to create all your materials and then you got to get that in the game engine where with concept you can draw out a dozen half a dozen variations of rocks in just a day or two and then that way you can make a gut call, yes, we like the third option that you did, so let's pass that to the production team. So at the end of the day, concept artist's job is to solve problems and ultimately to save the company money. And but how much of concept art is used and how much is just well, inside? 90% <laughs> of concept art is not used. Um, if wow. you enjoy concept art and like you get yourself some art books from games or movies or that sort of thing you're always going to come across images that you think look much better than what the final decisions were and that's <laughs> that is part of the process it's like in creating something entertainment based you need a lot of people to do it and you have to get all those people on the same page so even though it might not be the best looking piece of art, it will most certainly be the most appropriate piece of art that's used for the game. Though just looking at the art in the context of art itself, it might not be the best piece at all. Makes sense. It's kind of sad that you throw out all that art, but I guess I'm throwing it out. It's oh. just experimenting. Okay. So if anyone's looking for new brushes, I highly recommend going to that website and checking out 60 Best Photoshop Brushes. I am instantly falling in love with this. I'm actually, control, yeah, let me uh, delete, and let me move this over a bit so we can see it better. And so let me take a quick look. I, I'm mumbling, aren't I? Uh, yeah, I can hear you pretty well. All right. So the first thing I want to do, like I like that. We're never going to get that perspective in a uh, isometric game, but I want to try and capture that feel. And I like what's happening there. I love this. We got to do something like that Luxor temple. And then I love these interesting shape mountains and rocks. So I'm going to go with something a little like that. And the first thing I'm going to do is, oh. Yeah, actually, I'll stick with this. Just gonna work in just black. And do you always start in black, or that's just because it's visible? Is that what you use to kind of sketch things out? Uh, yes. I pretty much always just I start with a fifty percent gray background, uh, and then I go to black to start, and then I'll start erasing away to create new shapes and then eventually just going in getting some more detail there and I like where actually I like where that's going okay come back here and then at a certain point it's just a matter of This looks like some kind of wood fence. Is 
There's Amber Rain. Amber! And we gave a shout out to you a little earlier. Thank you for all your support. It is greatly appreciated. So do you have these mountain pictures on another screen? How are you referencing them and how do they inspire you? Do you just look at them and then you picture it in your head or do you look at them and then replicate them? I look at them, picture them in my head, and I think what's interesting about these is um, so because they're very flat on top, at a certain point in history, this is where the ground was. And then over time with wind uh, and water, they've been eroded away. And they've actually eroded away very sym symmetrically, which I think is interesting. So they're, they're slightly mushroom shaped. So they overhang at the top and then you've got these straight sides and you've got all this beautiful horizontal stra straightation. And then here you've got some like fallen rocks and that sort of thing. So that sense, uh, I'm totally digging it. And I actually, I want a different size image. So I'm gonna change my canvas size. And currently I'm 1600 by 1200. So I think I'm gonna go 1800 wide. And uh, just come back to the background, edit, fill. And I have it set to 50% gray. So that makes that easy. And that's a little more, yeah, that's a little more horizontal. I'll probably get a lot more horizontal before I'm finished. Okay. Definitely now, get those. does it does it affect? Uh, does is there a is there a default size for concepts, or is it really what you're trying to capture changes how large a canvas you want to paint on? I'm gonna say there is no default fault size for concept. It's really just about what the artist prefers. Um, I know when I'm doing environment pieces, I prefer to keep everything much more horizontal. Um, in our particular case for the game we have, I want to keep it a little more square. I mean, we certainly get horizontal, but we have that fixed perspective. So I want to be, make sure that we can look down on it. And then the next thing I need is uh, some light direction. Get the light coming from the upper right, which is kind of funny because historically I always make the light coming from the upper left. Why the switch? <laughs> it just happened to work that way. <laughs> There's no magic. There's a lot of, if you've ever heard the term happy accident, where you're just painting and then things happen and you're like, oh, hey, that's kind of cool, I like that, I'm gonna go with it. This early part in the concepting phase is, I look for those happy accidents for things to show up. Okay, and I really like that brush. So, I'm gonna save this and we are gonna save it. Projects, Kingdom Games, Concept, and we'll create a new folder and call this DLC. And this one is going to be Egypt 01. So I've been using Photoshop for over 15 years now, and I am still in the habit of saving every 15 minutes. I recommend that if you're a Photoshop user, you know occasionally Photoshop just like freaks out and crashes on you. So it's always important to uh, save as often as you can. Okay, so let me uh, just gonna darken that whole thing. And then switch. 
switch my eraser brush. So is the eraser more of a sculpting tool? What, what, why use the eraser instead of drawing it freehand? I, so painting and successful digital painting is not necessarily about what you put down on the canvas, but what you take away. And it's certainly like if you're an oil painter, you'll put down your darks very transparent and then your opaques will start to thicken up and then your lights are really thick, but you'll be working with, um, you're carving it out. And so being that I started traditionally with my work, I simply, instead of like using a, this is so weird, camera's backwards. So instead of using my thumb to kind of smear it or adjust it or a rag to wipe away to expose the shapes that I want, I will just erase away with the brush. So that is uh, my traditional experience, just creeping in. All right. So we have any questions from the community? It's a little quiet today. I'm surprised. A little quiet. Um, Amber spammed you out to everyone she knows of, so I'm sure your fans are coming in droves. Droves. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Chris, we should let everyone know that uh, the Kingdom Art Show, what are we going to call this? The Wolf and the Lion? Um, kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, we have to, I'm going to have to create a new YouTube playlist. We haven't, we haven't come up with that yet. Yeah, we're playing with the names that you said, the Wolf and the Lion, the Pen and the liking the wolf and the lion the uh, I like that. play on the wind and the lion it's good yeah I want to say who was that Sean Connery and uh, Ingrid Bergman someone help me <laughs> Ingmar Bergman yeah is that who that was do a quick search I'm drawing yeah that's what I'm doing hmm. it's an right. episode of Game of Thrones there you go that's the only thing that's popping up so that's Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of yeah. Thrones dominates. It, it is uh, taking up the entire YouTube search. Oh, that's Wait, because... Uh, uh, oh, I see. The Wolf and the Lion is actually an episode of Game of Thrones. The Wind and the Lion ah. was by John Milius. He didn't start Sean Connery in 1975. Yes. No wonder I like that movie. I'm a big fan of John Mealis. <laughs> the Lamb and the Lion, Amber suggests, which I think was another one you had suggested. Yeah, sure. I like that. The Lamb and the Lion. Got a nice little biblical illusion when you go that way, too. Yeah, it does. That's cool. I think you are frozen on Twitch. I could be wrong. No! <laughs> Let me see. I might just do the internet here as a... Uh, dying on us so I'm happy where just that rough is at so I'm gonna leave that and uh, let's just start with a new one clean slate let's go take a look at a reference again so cool desert one of Luxor looks cool Sinai desert okay I like this shape rock so we're going to try something a little bubblier like that. And I'm going to try out, man, this thing is massive, 1590. I have no idea why he makes brushes this big. Switch out to black. And one of the things you got to keep in mind too, and you always want to test out, is brushes can be designed or work better if you're right-handed versus left-handed. So, being left-handed, I, uh, yeah, that's kind of pretty, except it falls apart when it gets down to a reasonable size. Yeah, now, what do you look for in a brush? 
how do you know when you look at a brush that you're like, this is this is a good brush versus this is a, a mediocre one? Is it really just a pen? You have to you know it when you see it, or are there certain aspects that you know that you need for a specific piece? So, for me, for a brush, a brush should always have a hard edge and a soft edge and then a little bit of uh, positive negative in it. So like that shape there, that could be an interesting brush. And that's because it's got the hard, it's got the positive negative. You can even do like a line over here or something. I like this guy's brushes, but like 1,500 pixels, I don't know what the heck he's using them for, but that is incredibly massive. So a brush that follows the, I seriously. He's using it to paint his house. He must be. Um, maybe he just couldn't figure out how to get that style in a smaller resolution. I don't know, but I'm definitely gonna play with it. So this kind of shape right here is a great brush and actually you want to see what it does you're like of course yeah let's check it out <laughs> of course I thought you were just gonna show us I'm gonna I'm on a slight delay so when you said check it out I'm just gonna assume okay awesome that's where we're going with it right okay so I'm gonna give it a little more character And I'm going to grab that, control C, control N, control V. This guy's going to come over here. And let's go image size, and we'll just go 128 at 72, please. No. Gonna make that one 128. <laughs> okay. And then image, canvas size, pixels. We want it 128 on the width. So it's square. Okay. So what we do is uh, go ahead and flatten this. So we do control A to select it. And then we do edit, define brush preset. And give it a name. Um, sample brush is fine. Okay, so that brush is down here in the stack now. And you can see that I'm now making that. So now what I want to do with it is give it some character. So one of the first things is I check transfer and I set the opacity jitter to pen pressure. So that means when I'm drawing, if I have a light touch, let me just delete all this. If I have a light touch, it's very transparent. And then if I go with the heavier touch, it darkens up. So you get something interesting like that. Okay, next thing I want to do is, so let's go to the shape dynamics and size jitter, play with that a bit. And diameter, I kind of like that. You can uh, and tilt. Ah! That's going to be good. Scattering, do we want to scatter a little bit? Sure. And then texture is an interesting one. We can pick a texture to put in there and tell that texture to do something. I think in this case, what are we doing? Uh, scale, we're inverting it. Brightness, contrast. No, height, depth. That's not doing it. Hmm, I'm 
check invert, see what that does. I didn't do anything that I noticed. Pick the scale, find the brightness. Yeah, it's not working for me. So let's try dual brush. Come down here and have it give a yeah, we'll do a color burn and we'll pick something like that. And you can see by adding a different brush, you get a completely different effect. So if I take down the size a bit, and I want to, I want to minimize. So let's increase the scatter and address, adjust the spacing here. You can see I can get. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Pick up some colors here, do a little bit of uh, things with it. If I take down the size and the spacing and the scattering a bit. Okay, definitely the size needs to be up there. And I want to increase the count there we go so I'm going to increase the count because I want more of my original brush to show through that's what we're looking for okay so when you look at this you see that to the left it's kind of natural and mushy and splattery and to the right, you have a very hard edge. It's actually a really cool brush. And this is one you just created. Yeah, I just did it. Again, those happy accidents. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, let's see if this works. Wow, you know what? That looks pretty cool. So the pen pressure is actually really making a difference. So if I'm light-handed, I get the uh, second brush coming through. And then, if we do that, oh, that looks cool too. Let me go back the other way. Uh oh, won't let me do that. Come on. All right, so I'm playing with the brush and I'm having a good time here. So, when everything's done and you like your new brush that you've created, make sure you say, New brush preset, tell that okay. Minimize this guy and then over under your brush presets, make sure you save brushes. And then it's gonna ask you what you wanna call them. I always name my brushes after me and I think we're gonna call this guy Paint02 because it's got all those new brushes in there and I will have to go through these at some time and see how they work. I still want more of a horizontal format, so I'm going to expand the canvas size and uh, let's go 30 inches down here, edit, fill, 50% gray. Okay, now we've got a new page. And a uh, quick look at our reference. Okay, these really cool, soft, moundy like rocks, and that really dramatic change of scale. So I'm just going to come in here with this brush we just created. And just start creating the shapes. sticks out? Do you start with shapes? Do you start with just ideas? Um, for this particular case, I need to start with shapes. Uh, for me personally, I, I think Egypt just sticks 
and is very noticeable or notable for the majority of people is because it's been around for thousands of years and because they built such great monuments you can still see it it's a road into the past yeah even architecturally I think a lot of their building styles are pretty unique to that region right okay so now we've got uh, we got that shape. I'm gonna. Oh no. I rotate it. I'm gonna scale it. So I want more. More things like that. little random square shape that shows up I'm just loving I'm getting carried away <laughs> like no don't put that there but that's really cool okay so let's uh, what I'll do is just sample one of these lighter colors and uh, hey again I've got the light coming from the right I know there's someone out there, and I can't remember who it is, but I'm sure they're like, "What? He's doing the light from the right side. I don't, I don't understand." <laughs> yeah, that's that's a pretty interesting shift. I know. I just <laughs> gotta keep things consistent. You're you're going renegade for us. I know. I like to walk on the wild side. I I like the lighting coming from different directions. So one of the things that we want to do with this program is involve the community in the uh, creation of these environments and these characters that we're going to be uh, using going forward in five. All right, so I'm going to switch out to another brush, go back to one of these pencil brushes. to recreate those in a much smaller size because they just I like that but that's uh, as is they're just too big for the way I work but they are really cool so, so are you used to working on the smaller Centiques or the, uh, or the walk? You're work, used to working on the small Walcoms. Now that you have the giant Centique, you're drawing things too big. I uh, know. Actually, I've been working on a Centique for a couple years, and I can't work on the Wacom anymore. Oh my! It's just, <laughs> it's like dragging my hand through mud or something. Okay, I'm gonna go back to some of my old faithfuls here. turn on a light because it's getting kind of dark.
How's that? You see me better? You can. I will let you know soon. You will? Okay. I will let you know in the future. In the future? In the future. So, is it lagging? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you, are, you are well lit now. Yes. So, is it lagging behind? Is it choppy or is it just delayed? It's just, um, it, it's just how uh, Twitch works because it has to render everything and then stream it. So, there's always like a 10 second delay by default, give or take. Some people can get it down to like five seconds, but it's probably around 15 total seconds behind that I see what's going on. Okay. I am impressed by what's going on. No worries. Uh, rough up those edges. I'm going to get some, uh, bounce light around these guys um, I'm actually going to create a layer and get some just interesting mountainous shapes like that and then what I'll do is I'll just put it behind the other layer I'm going to lighten it just a smidge and then merge it. I'll come in here and carve out a little bit interesting shapes. Yeah, I can already see it coming together even though it's just the, the gradients of, of black and gray. You can already kind of see what you're going for. Good. Okay, so down here somewhere, I actually want to start working in some kind of cool temple. And this uh, shape here, I want to do something. So this picture of the archway between the rocks is kind of sticking in my head. And I'm like, okay, that actually looks pretty cool. Let's, let's see what we can do about getting something like that in here. Right, this stuff in the background, really just want to keep it uh, light because it is a desert environment. Channel my inner Bob Ross. Do you think they have squirrels in uh, the Sinai? In Egypt? Just asking, dude. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, I don't know what the wildlife of Egypt is like. Well, I'll get you an answer on that. Okay. Do they have squirrels? I need to find the happy Bob Ross squirrel. All right. You want to know what they got in Egypt? Yes. All right, we got foxes, hedgehogs, bats, sand cats. Dugongs. Uh, I want to make sure I'm. Yep. Donkeys. Donkeys. Of course, camels. You know. Camel. Various like uh, rodents that live in rocks and stuff like that. So. Okay. I do not see squirrels, but there are squirrel-like animals, like a. So a I need. Hyrax. I need to find my happy rat. You could do rats, definitely. Okay. Um, or it's your boa. <laughs> the happy snake. It's like a long-tailed, <laughs> long-tailed gerbil. You get tons of, a lot more rodents than you'd expect, and then um, a fair amount of aquatic life, actually. And then cats and other predatory animals. Okay. No squirrels, though. That doesn't get into the, the fun stuff like the, the reptiles and amphibians. Snakes like cobras, that kind of stuff. Cobra. Yeah. That's a crazy one. Let's see. Oh. No. Actually, this is more of a... That's a plant one. How about this guy? This guy works. So something I'm going to do here is start to indicate a... Well, actually, I think I'm going to go with the arch. And 
we will um, let's see, we'll carve this out. Exactly. I can see him. That's amazing. Can tell. And that's all the eraser, huh? That's well, no, this time it's uh, so the eraser cut out the arch like this, and then the rest is uh, painting. You saw that one archway that really appealed to you, and then you saw the landscapes, and you formulated this vision in your head. Right. With the light coming from the right side. Right, which is just an anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> the strangest part of the entire experience. Right. What am I doing? Okay. So, in its simplest form... This is, uh, it's like, okay, yeah, there's some kind of ruined archway by a rocky hill there. Yeah. It's like, all right. That, that captures a little bit of those elements between these two images. Now, this main rock has some massive scale, so I think what I'm going to do with the whole image is just slide it over and make this guy a lot bigger. And we'll go back down to our original custom brush that we made and uh, continue to see what we can do with that. Questions from the community. Uh, here's one from uh, Chelsea. You might know her. Is it a personal style to draw and then carve out with the eraser, or is that a common method? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so it hangs over from when I used to oil paint. Um, carving out of your medium whatever you're using, be it eraser or paint or even clay, is actually uh, a good technique. So that just carries over from when I used to paint and I still use it and I actually like it. So like right here, I'm adding color with a brush and I don't like it as much as if I had uh, erased it away. Ah, stop that. Now, is that the eraser that you're getting the, you're adding the light with, or is that a, just a different gradient that you're painting over with? It was a different gradient, and it's not quite working for me, so. Because <laughs> what I should be doing is erasing it. coming up on an hour, right? Yeah, we're coming up in an hour right now. Uh, let's keep it going. Let's uh, right. keep the show at least at an hour. Maybe we'll go an hour and a half. All right. I'm kind of just getting into the zone, so I really don't want to stop yet. Yeah, wait, I can't. I want to see where this goes. The 
people are getting bored watching, let me know. starting to feel like a uh, like a wall that's collapsed along here It's just the feel. Um, there is at a certain point where concept art actually becomes production art. And that production art or production concept art is used to build assets from. And that's when you want to be very mindful of the scale and what size everything is. And in those cases, your concept's always going to have like a little guy standing there for measurement. Amber said she could never be bored. She's learning everything just by watching you. So All right. Don't worry about boring anyone. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Okay. Let me go back here and look at this image again. kind of an interesting little thing archway here by these rocks in the desert it's, uh, I wonder if I've got my cloud brushes oh my gosh I don't know what I'm hitting when I do that but it's driving me nuts got a cloud brush yeah woohoo so a lot of the brushes I use come from an artist by the name of Jamie Jones. I had the uh, pleasure of meeting him some years back. He was doing this uh, presentation on his style and how he works. And it was, uh, it was awesome. He's also a very kind and generous person and shares his brushes with everyone. So. That's where these come from. So I do a control alt delete and then I hit warp. Wow. Start getting uh, a lot more movement in there. Uh, I think I'm kind of getting carried away. But <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Just never enough art. Bring these guys down here a little smaller in the background. Okay, so that suddenly gives a real sense of movement to uh, the scene. Um, okay, that's kind of awesome. Let's go with it. 
Uh, and actually, honestly, what do you think about doing some color here? Uh, I would love to see some color. I'm oh. amazed by this, okay, this so stretchy thing you're doing. The stretchy thing? Yeah, I don't know what you call that. That was cool. It's warp. That is amazing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to highlight my ground, Control L, and I'm going to take out some of the blackest blacks. And I'm going to take out some of the whitest whites. And I want to get it more neutral. And that's because as I lay color on top of it, I want to be able to see that color. So, let's see. All these pictures have a bright blue sky. Oh, that one doesn't. Mm. So there's two ways you could do this. You can look at the image and kind of eyeball the color, or you could just bring it in and then sample it. And I think what I'm going to do is just kind of eyeball it. So I'm seeing very much a tealish blue in the sky. So we're going to go get a uh, tealish blue, somewhere like that. Just dump that in. You can set that to overlay. And uh, then I'm going to take this color. I'm going to add a little more blue to it. And I'll keep using this cloud brush. And those cool elements will really start to uh, show up. I, I don't know if that's a level of resolution that everyone can see, but. Uh, the blues are a little cooler in there. Um, and then with those rocks, warm color is really just kind of a, a dirty orange. So I'm going to turn this off for a second, and I'm going to go to Select Color Range. I'm going to pick a range in there. That works pretty good. So now I have a active map and I'm gonna go and get kind of a dirty orange color. Ooh, didn't wanna do it that high and actually I think I better change my brush. There we go, we'll go to this guy. Do you always start with the background colors as your base? Yeah. And that's just, uh, again, painting. Uh, you paint background to foreground. Okay, control D, control S. It's starting to look kind of muddy. Not super crazy about that. So now let's go in here and add the shadow color, which I almost want to say is kind of purplish. It's like a grayish orange, painted blue. I have no idea. So let's start with that and let's go with something a little more gray. And try purple. Radio is raiding the channel, Stephen. <laughs> they are here. Yes. They are here and they want to see their favorite. Hey, everybody. I hope everyone likes the new setup. You can actually see me working and uh, the art, which is, I don't know, that's different. That's nice. Okay, so now I got some color in there, and I'm liking that. Am I liking that? So I come back here, 
and that orange and pink is even more, but I've got this just on an overlay, so I need to add another layer, and I'm going to go get a brush. Let's come in here, and you can see, like, once you get this close, it's just mush, but that's okay. So I want to go richer. There we go. Continue to look at my reference to find things that I like. Get a little more detail in there. It's like once you go into shadow, you lose most of the visual information. So I'm going to take a, actually, I'm going to highlight that background shape. So I don't go outside it. I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to soften it. I'm trying to decide which brush I like. Yeah, that ain't it. Something I also have going is I have my navigator open and I look at it to see how the image is looking full screen. Even though I'm zoomed in here, I want to be able to see the whole thing. So how do you do that? Um, there we go. So that's my second screen and that's my navigator. And that red square around it shows the image that I see that I'm close up. And so I will always glance at that as I'm working. Um, so I can see the art pulling back from it. So it's like when you're painting, you always step back from your painting. Same kind of thing digitally. You want to step back and you want to see the whole thing. Hey, Royal Sexy. Hope all is well. so it looks like bricks in the wall kind of thing. It becomes very obvious, man-made.
community, I am really thrilled with the opportunity to be able to do this. Uh, those of you that have been following me for a while know I just love to paint and uh, tell stories with my art. I am really excited to be a part of this project. I was just about to say how amazed I am that you can get this far in an hour. You can go from nothing to here. Well, when you zoom in on it, it's still just like mushy brush strokes. I can see pretty clear details. <laughs> it looks pretty good so far. Good. Good. I think the chat would agree with me. What do you think, Chad? Is Steven doing a good job or is it all mush so far? I think it's pretty impressive. Something that's really important too, and the reason like when I started with that background color and I put it everywhere, is because you want to uh, have the dynamicness of the warms playing against the cools. And so you'll see like right here in the foreground, I've got some of this blue green showing up. That's because it's, uh, Actually, I should. Where? Okay, there we go. So here in the foreground, I have this little bit of blue green, and that's because it's bringing in some of that background sky color, and it's very important that you do that. It's like pushing and pulling with the light. Just getting everything to play nice together. Now what time of day are you thinking, or can that be decided way after the fact? Now I'm thinking this is late afternoon. So the sky's starting to get a little yellow in it. Um, we're getting some long shadows on the rocks. Bring more of this in here. This might be a, oh, I can't believe I just did that, but. This is gonna kind of just indicate shapes over here. Get some kind of ruin. I'm going to say it's harder to create a picture perfect building because there's going to be like with the wear and tear there's always going to be mistakes and you want those mistakes okay so I've highlighted my cloud layer and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab the white of the cloud but instead of this blue color I'm going to move it to peachy color. There we go. And uh, just hit them on the edge where the sun's coming from to the right, which I never do. <laughs> It's 
not what I wanted. Okay, so I want to get a little bit of this light color over there, but because it's further away and more in atmosphere, I need it to be a little peachier and a little less saturated. peach highlights there. That's not quite what I wanted. Some of the peach in there. Okay, that's feeling good. Now, the final thing I want to do here is uh, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to uh, call it or tag it layer type as color dodge. What does color dodge do? Color dodge is uh, interesting and I'm just gonna start with this brush I'm gonna grab this orangish color I'm gonna go a little more saturated and probably just a bit more red Wow it's not what I wanted All right. so because this picture is so light I need some richer, deeper colors. There we go. Do you have an eye for color palettes, or do you have a calculation that knows these colors are complementary, or how do you know what color is uh, the right color? Just experience. Over time, it always goes back to uh, the basic color wheel, like you learn in elementary school, and then playing on that. I do not have as good a sense of color as some artists out there. I used to work with a fellow named uh, Ryan Gitter. I'm sure he's got a website. His sense of color was just amazing. He can use just the oddest combinations of like pinks and greens or oranges. I'm not sure what happened there. That's what happened. Okay. Um, and really get just a wonderful sense of these beautiful colors and you look at them and you think oh that's gorgeous but I would never have thought to put those colors together and he just nails it what would be an example um, well, let's go see <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know <laughs> what colors like yellow and brown that would be a weird one oh, I'm at Ryan Gitter art station all right so if you enjoy art, a great place to go is ArtStation. There's one. So here he's got, it's essentially very monochromatic with lots of hints of green down through here and then it feels more green than it actually is because he's got these reds and oranges. There's another one. Oh, this one's beautiful. So this is, uh, you know, you got the teals and the greens. You got hints of purple in here and red, uh, some blue. He, it actually runs the spectrum. Oh, uh, fantastic. Yeah, I think this is, I'm not sure what he did for this one, but this one I really like too, with the reds, the oranges, and then just this streak of blue in here to really contrast it. It's really nice work. So that's what I mean by a sense of color. So 
I'm going to take that back a bit and uh, actually, I think I'm going to pull that out in the middle there. This, the blue. Let's get a richer, darker blue, kind of sunsetty. There we go. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe uh, some plants in here? There's got to be a little bit of green, right? There, there is plant life in Egypt. I was surprised. No, very colorful plant life. Is it? Oh, yeah. All right. Make this kind of just gray. And, uh... Okay. Oh, we're talking 3,000 years ago, though, right? Right. Actually, it was much greener 3,000 years ago. Yeah, the papyrus plant, which looks kind of like a a palm tree meet, uh, mixed with a bush. Oh. I suppose I could throw in some palm trees just to be cheeky. Be funny. Uh, what else I got? So. Very like purplish flowers and uh, I guess cacti probably. Ugh! Oh. You know what? I'm going to go with that because that kind of pulls the focus a little a little closer to our focal point there in the center. Um, you know, actually, I'm almost kind of wondering, oh my gosh, what am I doing that does that? Yeah, oh, let's make a software, but it's only good for right-handed people. Well, you know, that is 90% of the population. No, it's 75%, mister. Oh, okay. Don't you forget it. They say the uh, left-handers are a little more creative, though, which would correlate. Right, that's because we're in our right mind. Uh, ah, sorry. Couldn't resist. Um, and Balinese, uh, I eat you, she, tiaka, is like this tree that looks like a shrub. So it's like a little stick tree with this huge plum shrub, and it drops fruit, too. Oh, that's cool. There's a giant watermelon plant, I would call it. Oh, the bitter melon plant, I should say. Yeah, so you got some green near Egypt. A little, uh... And a, there, is a, there is a type of palm tree that's very strange looking. A fan palm. It's not like the ones you see in Vegas or something? Not quite. It looks kind of... It kind of looks like a Shih Tzu palm tree. It's really furry looking. So let's do... I wonder if there's a palm brush with this. No. This might work. I'm going to just test this out and see if this works. Scraggly looking palm trees. <laughs> oh, don't judge me by my palm trees. <laughs> I don't know. What's the chat thing of the palm trees? I kind of like them. Right. I, don't, I don't think I'd use the word scraggly. Scruffy? Okay, so once I've drawn that, I'm going to highlight them, and then I'm going to come in with a, like, I'll get this green color. Yeah, that's actually kind of green looking. And hit the areas where I think it should be light. I 
Chris. point i like to keep it really impressionistic because what have we spent here we've spent 90 minutes correct right and we have a viable concept for the environment that sets tone and mood so it's late afternoon it's windy actually that's something i want to do is uh get some more just that sense of dust blowing Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Nice pretty clouds and get some nice cliffs and, and valleys here. I'm uh, trying to capture the, the vibe of like lots of dust blowing through the environment. Sir. Oh, you're very welcome. It's awesome. Amber Brandon uh, just walked up to me. It's a, a fake call in. It's a, a walk over, <laughs> I should say. A walk in. We need more callers. Organized call ins. Is that something you're interested in doing, Amber? I would be happy. Uh, we do have a Twitch Skype setup that we were doing on. Um, uh, lunch day, and you were watching. Um, if you'd like to be on call with Steven as he paints, we can definitely organize that. As Steven does his concept show once a month, I can very easily organize that. Is that yes. something you're interested in, Steven? You want to do call ins? Heck yeah. It would be a lot uh, of fun. I I can organize that. That could happen. So, some of you know, a lot of you don't, that until a couple of years ago, until I joined Portalarium and became part of the Shroud of the Avatar team, I was a very private person. I didn't really engage with anyone. And uh, Gina, our community manager at the time, said, hey, I had to make you a YouTube channel. And I was a deer in the headlights. And then she explained to me, one of my shows got more views than all the other shows combined. And it was like, wow, that's really exciting. People would actually want to watch me work as an artist. And uh, so I've been doing it for, I don't know, the last year and a half. I know I took a 10 month hiatus, had to make a game, but uh, I'm back doing it. And we are going to be here, what, every Thursday or the first Thursday of every month. That's what it is, right, Chris? Yeah, uh, I believe that is the current plan, although I'm open to increasing that as audience demand, as you have time, as. Yeah. Yep, so uh, that's what it is for now. Maybe we'll even do every other week. <laughs> yeah, um, anything you want to do, I'm open to. So if I know you have some diehard fans, um, the best way to do it is just to tweet Steven, tweet to Kingdom, and let us know this is what you want to see, and we'll make it happen. That's you right. you got to let us know, and we'll, we'll make it happen. But Amber, definitely next time Steven's streaming, I will... I will have Skype set up, and we will have some sort of call-in thing set up. Pretty easy to do. Excellent. Steven, I know, is open to it, and uh, I think that would be great. I would love to see that. I really enjoy doing lunch. I think you did too, Steven. I like oh, yeah. call-in scheme, so I think that's something we should definitely do. We do that. The, uh, so all of Kingdom Games social media is Kingdom Games ATX. That's right. We Excellent. are on all the your favorite social media sites. We are there. 
Yes, that was a place to go. So let me walk you through where we started 90 minutes ago. Did uh, this uh, looking at uh, some reference here. This arch and the Sinai, an image of the Sinai Desert. Uh, this temple in Luxor. Maybe we'll, we're going to do this next time. This thing is really cool. And uh, this cliff, these mesas are really neat. So that's where we started. We tested out some new brushes, which are really cool, but they're a little big for the size that I work at. And uh, then our next one was this. And I think that was a little more in line of where I want to go with the Egyptian environment. So, and just by turning on each of these layers, you can see how it's working. And then that final one, that color dodge that just really uh, makes it rich and vibrant, brings out the color. That's amazing. I can't believe you can just do that in 90 minutes. <laughs> Thanks. It takes a lot longer when you have to get really detailed and stuff. I, I understand that. I think that's a beautiful piece of work. I, I don't know. What does the chat think? I'm pretty impressed. I'll that's, wait for it. Let me amazing. switch back. Unbelievable. And you say that you'll do, if you did 100 of these, 90 would be passed on and 10 would forward into into full production mode and you'd start to go and iterate on those yeah that's correct so and how many of those levels in production would be in the final game uh that varies from project to project because we're a small studio uh we we need to make less mistakes so I, will, uh, I won't be putting anything into production that's not going into the game. And uh, granted, there are always big changes, um, especially when you're creating a new game, and you have to be flexible for that and adjust for it, but I think we have a really good understanding of where we want to take five, so there's going to be less of things just abandoned. Right. Awesome work, Steven. Thank you. Community, I am Steven Dinelli, Art Director from Kingdom Games, and I am here with... Chris, the humble community servant for Kingdom Games. Chris is an amazing community servant. Thanks yeah. for joining us. I am truly honored that you are here and participating with us, creating the next step for five. So please, tune in. Um, I'm going to look at the calendar. Thursday, January 7th. Um, sounds like we're going to have a few phone calls going. Yes. And we will continue the exploration of Egyptian environments and things that we'll put in Sinai. And I know one of the things I want to do is that uh, Luxor type temple and get some statues in there and some kind of smaller sphinxes, not specifically the sphinx, but s sphinx statues. Um, and guys, if you want to see more of Steven, if once a month this isn't enough, uh, we are on Twitter, we're on Facebook, uh, we have emails you can reach us at. Let us know. If you want to see more Steven all the time, we'll make, I will make it happen. We just want to know that's what you want, and we will make it happen. Yes, we will. Good night, everyone. Have a great week. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. It's going to be a while before I'm back. What, four weeks? Four weeks. See